Welcome to another hit film tutorial. I'm Axel Wilkinson and here we are going to be looking at keyframing in hit film. One of hit film's most powerful features is the ability to change the values of specific properties over time to create animation within your project. Nearly every property of a layer that can be edited can be animated. This allows you to dynamically change not only the position of objects but many more detailed aspects of your effects such as their color and how they interact with other layers in the project. The heart of this powerful system is keyframing. Keyframing allows you to assign specific values to fixed spots in time, then HitFilm will automatically calculate the values to get from one keyframed value to the next. Keyframing is a term originating in traditional hand-drawn animation, where the animator draws specific key positions of a character's motion over time. The scene is then given to an assistant animator, or in-betweener, who draws all the frames in between the animator's keyframes. So, in this walk cycle that we are looking at, the animator drew four keyframes. The first is this frame where the right foot contacts the ground. Then there is a matching frame where the left foot lands. These two frames contain the extreme positions of the movement of both the feet and the hands, and are therefore the key frames controlling that movement. But we need two more keyframes between them to control the motion of the head. As the character walks, his head bounces up and down, and on both of our two extreme frames, the head is at its lowest point. So the animator adds two additional keyframes halfway between them, which mark the highest point of the bouncing motion. These frames also introduce the bend in both the arms and legs, which in our initial keyframes were straight. So in these four keyframes, the animator has specified the extreme positions of every aspect of the character's movement. He can now hand this scene over to the in-betweener to create the remaining frames. In this case, for the timing of the walk to be correct, there needs to be two additional frames between each of these keyframes. So the in-betweener creates these additional frames, which are drawn with red lines here so you can distinguish them from the keyframes. Keyframing is a feature of composite shots. In the editor, you can make global adjustments to a clip, but if you need to keyframe any properties over time, the clip will have to be in a composite shot. Nearly any property of a clip that can be adjusted in the controls panel can also be keyframed on the timeline. Exceptions include the layer properties and any other properties with a dark gray dot next to their name. Most properties will have a light gray toggle button next to their name and you can tick this button on to activate keyframing. If you are on the editor timeline, no properties will be keyframable. In order for any property to record keyframes, you have to turn keyframing on using the toggle. Once activated, the toggle will turn bright green to indicate its on status and the current value for that property will be stored in a keyframe at the current location of the playhead. A smaller white dot in the center of the toggle will indicate that the playhead currently is residing on a keyframe. Once keyframing is on, then every time you make an adjustment to that property, a keyframe will be recorded. You can adjust the property on the timeline, in the controls panel, or in the viewer using the widgets. If keyframing is enabled for multiple properties, only the properties whose values you change will record keyframes at the current playhead position. When a keyframe is created, a small gray diamond will appear on the timeline. When you're on a timecode where a keyframe already exists and you change the value, then the existing keyframe will be updated to contain the new value you've specified. If you toggle keyframing off again, all the keyframes assigned to that layer will be deleted and the value of the current frame will be assigned to the clip globally. At the top left of the timeline, there is a group of green buttons that can be helpful when editing keyframes. The left and right arrows allow you to quickly move forward and backward through existing keyframes of the selected property. If no property is selected, then the arrows will be grayed out. Especially when zoomed out on a large timeline, it can be difficult to scrub the playhead to the exact timecode of a keyframe. But these arrows make it easy to move to the exact timecode of each existing keyframe when you need to edit them. Sometimes, you may need to create a keyframe without changing the value for a property. 
The plus button allows you to create a keyframe in any selected properties using the current value. So perhaps we want this clip to stay opaque for one second and then at the one second mark gradually start to fade out. So here at one second we need to create a new keyframe that has the same value of 100%. Well we could do that by changing the value then bringing it back but that's a little cumbersome so I'm gonna undo that with control Z and then we can use this plus button to add a new keyframe at the current time code using the current value. Now we can advance the playhead and create a new keyframe at the end of that clip to create the fade that we wanted. Keyframes turn blue when selected, but in order to edit their value, you still need to position the playhead on the location of the keyframe. Using the keyframe navigation arrows conveniently does both at the same time. You can select keyframes on the timeline also by clicking them and edit which property they are assigned to and the time code at which they are applied. Perhaps we've decided that one second isn't long enough for our fade on this clip, and so we can select this keyframe and just drag it to a new time code to change the timing of the animation it creates. Moving keyframes farther apart will cause the animation occurring between them to slow down, whereas moving them closer together will cause it to speed up. If I move this keyframe now much closer to the end, you can see that now the fade happens much more quickly over just a few frames right at the end of that composite shot. You can click and drag to select multiple keyframes with the marquee tool and then move the selected group in unison or you can control click individual frames to add them to the selection. Once they're all selected you can click drag on any of the selected keyframes to move the group as a whole. You can also scale the timing of entire groups of keyframes. If we switch back to this particle effect we were looking at earlier, you can see we have quite a number of keyframes assigned to the position of this layer. Now if we select this entire group, you can see as we scrub through those are just controlling it going back and forth across the top of the frame there. So with that entire group selected, you can alt click on the rightmost or leftmost frame of the selected group and drag to extend the group as a whole. And you can see how the distance between each keyframe stays uniform as the group expands. So now when we hit play, we get the same overall motion, but it happens a bit slower because the keyframes are spread out over a longer period of time. Now, one side effect of this is that often some of these intervening keyframes will land at a subframe timecode. But if I zoom well in on the timeline, you can see here this keyframe is exactly on the timecode for that frame. But here, notice how we can't actually place the playhead on that keyframe. Because due to the scaling, this keyframe ends up in between the timecode of these two frames on either side of it. So that's called a subframe timecode. HitFilm can still process keyframes on subframe timecodes so that your timing stays perfect, but you won't be able to edit these keyframes until you move them to a primary frame position. You can also copy and paste keyframes in HitFilm. I'm going to scale this group down again by holding Alt and dragging this last frame. So we've got this back and forth motion set up with these keyframes, but let's say we want that motion to continue all the way to the end of our timeline. Well, if we have those frames selected, then we can right click and copy, or you can hit Control C. Then we just need to move the playhead to the position where we want the first of the keyframes to land. Then right click again on the property that we want to paste them into and choose Paste. Now we have a duplicate of that group of keyframes which will continue our movement. We need to extend the camera so that those frames are visible you can see how that movement continues on. Now you can also paste some keyframes between different properties, but not all properties use the same system of measurement. For example, these rotation controls all use measurements in degrees. So if I very quickly create a couple of keyframes, then I can copy those keyframes and paste them into these other rotation properties. I could even go down into the movement and choose one of these rotation properties and paste them there. Now this doesn't work for, say, 
the scale property because it measures in a percentage. And so even if I try, I can't paste because it uses a different system. And so as long as the system of measurement is the same, you can copy keyframes between properties. But there are a number of different uh, ways of measuring. You can see the lifetime measures in seconds. Scale is a percentage. This is just a straight numeric value. And then we have degrees, as we talked about here. If you open the appearance, this one chooses a color. So obviously that's kind of unique. But within any of those different types of measurements, as long as two properties use the same system, you can copy and paste keyframes between them. One of the more advanced aspects of keyframing allows you to control the type of interpolation that is applied to the keyframes. This controls the exact spacing that HitFilm will assign to each of the in-between frames that it calculates. So if we select a keyframe or multiple keyframes and right-click, you can then mouse down to the interpolation menu. Linear is the default and it means that all the in-between frames will have the exact same difference in value from one to the next. Now for many properties this will be perfectly acceptable and even desirable. However, when animating motion, Disney animators discovered decades ago that if you use much smaller movements in the frames surrounding a keyframe, it allows the eye to register the keyframe better and create smoother movement in the animation. Look closely at the hands in this clip, particularly when they are behind his back. There's a snap to their movement, created by the linear keyframes, as they only sit in that keyframe position for one frame before quickly moving back toward the front. Now compare that movement to this clip, where the in-betweens have been smoothed. The movement of the hands is quite rapid through the center of their arc, but it slows down as the hands approach the keyframe position, with the result that the hands are seen to be near the keyframe for a longer period of time, and the movement ends up being smoother. So in hip film, the smooth option simulates this effect. If I select this group of keyframes, and first I'll play them with the default linear interpolation, and you can see how it's just very linearly going back and forth. Okay, now if I take those selected frames and I change their interpolation to smooth, notice how the movement of the effect changes. See how it hangs a little bit longer at the end? at each end of that movement. There are additional options in the interpolation menu. The smooth in and smooth out allows one side of the keyframe to be smoothed. So if you choose smooth in, then the keyframes are going to slow down as they approach the keyframe, but then once they pass it, they'll resume a linear interpolation. Smooth out does the opposite. Uh, they will linearly approach the keyframe and then gradually come out of that keyframe position after they pass it. The final interpolation option, constant, prevents HitFilm from interpolating the in-between frames so that each keyframe value is held constant until a new keyframe is reached. So with that, you can see if I hit play, the effect stays in one position until the new keyframe is reached, at which point it immediately jumps to the new position. Well, that just about covers the ins and outs of the keyframing system in HitFilm. Hopefully that answers any questions about keyframing that you had. If not, do please contact us and let us know. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can catch all of our upcoming tutorials in the future. Thanks again.